Hello and welcome back to the Roadster Experience. Today we're going to talk about getting the front suspension put on, the upper and lower control arms, the shocks, and getting the brakes mounted. I promised you I was going to be able to improve the quality of the video and the audio and I went and bought some equipment and we got it all set up, tested it, it worked great. Uh, then we actually put the front end together and it was hot garbage. Uh, my wife suggested that I take it all apart and use the new camera that I got. And uh, of course, I locked her in a dark closet to let her think about what she just said and decided to just use some still photos and talk over what we did. And hopefully you can understand everything we accomplished. Okay, we laid out our upper and lower control arms. On the upper control arms, we went ahead and put all the bolts in just finger tight to get everything basically set up, install the ball joints according to the book. Pretty simple procedure there. On the lower control arms, one thing we did is we took a Dremel and we put little grooves in the rubber, as you see here, to allow the grease to flow more freely. Ideally, what you want to try to do is line them up with these little weep holes because that's where the grease is going to come out. All right, now we're going to move on to installing the F panel, the first real piece to go on the car. I've already gone ahead and taken the drill and cleaned the uh, powder coat out of all the pre hole drills. I go ahead and apply my coat of silicone and I click that bad boy in place. Once we get all the Clecos in, I uh, go ahead and uh, pull out my Old Milwaukee Automatic Riveter, which by the way is an awesome tool if you have about $350 that you don't know what to do with. And uh, I begin riveting it in place. Pretty simple. Holes are already drilled. I'm just going to line everything up and zip it in there. Once I had uh, all the rivets in and the Clecos out, I went and took a rag and cleaned up any excess silicone with a little bit of acetone and uh, made it look pretty. All right, looking good, all except that one little rivet that isn't spaced properly because that's where the sheet metal screw was. That'll haunt me in my dreams forever. All right, lower control arms are next. We're going to use the provided hardware and just go ahead and slide those bad boys in place. The one thing you want to look for is remember you get that spacer installed on the front edge of the rear attachment point. And once you get everything all secure, you're going to torque that baby down to 100 to 110 foot pounds. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to put the upper control arm on. Uh, things you want to look at before you go ahead and mount it is make sure that all the Zerk fittings are facing up and your ball joint is facing down. The bolt in the back does not get a washer on the back side. The bolt in the front does. And we're going to to uh, torque both of these down to 80 to 85 pounds. Once we're done with that, we'll go ahead and tighten these up just till they're snug. You still want this to be able to move with a little bit of friction to it. Okay, now once I have it mounted here, I'm going to go ahead and torque these down to 54 foot, foot pounds. Um, I did catch a mistake. I don't know if you saw it when I first installed it. I actually had this installed upside down. This large open portion right here, and I'll tell you, show you a close-up of it. The large portion is supposed to be the outside with the ball joint facing down. I actually had this flipped over and the ball joint installed upside down. So when you weren't looking, I had to take it all apart and make it right. Once we're done with that, we'll go ahead and set up the measurements on the top of the control arm. You can do that on the bench if you want. I decided to do it on the car, six of one, half dozen of the other. All right, once you get uh, everything torqued properly and you have your ball joint facing the right way go ahead and pull out your grease gun and get all those zerk fittings properly lubed up 
Okay, on to the shock assembly. We already assembled our shock in the last video and we had some downtime, so it's all ready to just plug and play. I did make one mistake on that video that I want to clarify for you. I told you there were four clicks on the shock when you're doing the adjustment. There's actually three clicks and four positions, and mine is set all the way counterclockwise to the softest position. Now you can see my friend Gary here. He's gone in and installed the top portion of the shock on the lower bolt hole of that assembly arm. You use the large spacers on the top of the shock and you use the smaller spacers on the bottom of the shock. The only thing more fun than building a car is watching somebody else struggle to do the same thing. <laughs> Need your spacers? Are you gonna vote? Okay, once you get everything secured, go ahead and pull out your torque wrench and torque both the top and the bottom down to 50 foot-pounds. Okay, onto the spindles and hub. Your spindles are marked DSS for driver's side and PSS for passenger side. However, on the Roadster, we install those opposite. So the uh, driver's side will be marked PSS and DSS for the passenger side. Uh, you'll start with the bottom and you'll lift the lower control arm up and slide that through the uh, spindle. Make sure that the spacer is installed with the bevel side towards the ball joint. Go ahead and put your nut on there and tighten that sucker up to 80 to 90 foot pounds. That gives you a little bit of room so you can get the cotter key to line up. Then just go ahead and attach the upper ball joint no spacer or washer there, and tighten that down to 75 foot-pounds. Having the boot all smushed up like that on the ball joint until you get weight on the wheels is normal. All right, next piece to go on is the uh, steering arms. We're going to make sure we mount those so that the uh, tie rod ends will mount to the front. Uh, we just slip those two bolts in there and torque them down to 60 foot-pounds. Okay, the hub just slips over the spindle. Uh, mine took a little love from a rubber mallet to get on. It's a pretty tight fit. And then you torque that bad boy down to 225 to 250 foot-pounds. I had to go to AutoZone and sign out a torque wrench to go that high because mine did not. You follow that up by putting the dust cover on and you're all set. Okay, onto the wheel wood brakes. You got your hat and you got your disc. You flip it over and you put in the screws one by one with a little bit of red Loctite, and then you're going to torque them down to 155 inch pounds. Finish that up with a little safety wire, and then your disc is ready to install. This little washer looking thing is called the registration adapter, which keeps your rotor centered on the hub. You go ahead and slide that in place, and then you can slide the hat over the studs. Go ahead and put the rotor in position on the hub and use a couple of lug nuts to tighten it down so it's held properly in place. Next, we're going to move over to our caliper. We got to get our brake pads in the caliper. First thing you want to do is identify the little ring clip that you have to remove to get access to it. Use a pair of needle nose pliers to just pinch the two ends together and that pin will slip right out. Once the pin's out, you put the pads in place, slip that pin back in, and replace that clip. Now bring your caliper over and mount it up to your hub assembly. You'll note that there's a washer under each bolt, and then in between the mount and the caliper, you have these small washers you can put in there to center the caliper over the rotor. If you look in the picture here, you can see how that center line on the caliper is lined up with the center of the rotor and everything should turn freely. Once you get it where you can snug it down and it looks like that, you're all done. Okay, well that does it for this episode. Be sure to join us next time when we dig into the independent rear suspension. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.